disappointing news as well from the Oxford um, vaccine as well. So we'll look at that too. The main thrust of the discussion today that I want to do is the couple of things. Number one, I want to discuss how the uh, Moderna's vaccine, the one that is doing better for the time being, how is that? That's a modern vaccine. So how does that work? What are the concerns there? What could be the issues which they are cons they are addressing right now? Similarly, the Sinovac, the China's company, and the vaccine that they have made, what are the possible concerns there and what are they doing there? So if you are someone who is looking for a vaccine, we all are in a in near future, and you want to know that what could be the issues there, uh, and how the companies are addressing them. I wanted to make sure that today we become uh, aware of those. So with this, let's start. Um, so tell me this, are you able to hear, this is a new computer I got. This is a Windows uh, machine. Brown, Hilda, welcome. Hello, doctor. Hello, back to you as well. Uh, can you guys hear me? Hey, Scott, how are you? Yes, absolutely. So I am working on a Windows machine. I am used to Mac machine. <laughs> so since this morning, I am not able to run my Bluetooth uh, speakers in the Windows machine. Uh, on one end, it says the speakers are connected. But when I go to the speakers, it says speakers are not going to work. They, and when I try to see what is going on, what's wrong, it simply says fail to detect the problem. So it's it's kind of funny. but. I wanted to have a, a computer that, that made a little less noise. My Mac used to turn the fan on and would create a lot of noise. Excellent. So let's start. So again, two things to do today. Number one, understand how Moderna's vaccine works. And number two, understand where are the issues with those vaccines? Where should we be concerned about the vaccines? And how are the companies taking care of them? So that is a discussion. So let's start off. The good news is that Moderna's vaccine in the phase one trial has been administered to people and they have tested eight people for the antibody development, the neutralizing antibody, I would say, development. And all of them had enough quantities of the neutralizing antibodies that they feel that if the virus comes in, they will be able to handle it. So that is the good news. That is the best news that we should all be hearing. A sad news is that the Oxford uh, vaccine, which was supposed to be uh, one of the, you know, it was there was a lot of hype there and uh, Oxford had done a great job and there are best people over there. I remember hearing someone saying that this is one of the best um, and that is true. However, the vaccine has failed to protect the uh, rhesus monkeys in which it was given. So just to balance it out, the Moderna's vaccine is given to people, but they have not yet, I believe, challenged by the virus. So we do not know that if they will be safe from the virus or not. However, it has, they have definitely produced the antibodies which are neutralizing to the spike protein. So I suspect that they would be able to handle it. Oxford's uh, vaccine so far in the first trials on the monkeys has failed. So that is a sad news as well, because we were all waiting for that too. The third one, and that is Sinovac. Sinovac, I think, is already ahead of the pack because they have already done animal uh, tests. And they have, as I said before as well, they have proved that the rhesus monkeys, when they were vaccinated and then they were uh, challenged by the virus, they did not develop the infection. So that is a good news on the Sinovac side. And Sinovac is now moving to phase three and, and is ready to offer the vaccine to the world. So the, that is the situation. So let's start our discussion. I'm going to share my screen. So anybody who just wanted the news for what's happening in the vaccine, Moderna, very promising. People have developed antibodies, neutralizing antibodies, I should say. Oxford, not very good results from the, from the rhesus monkeys. And then the uh, Sinovac, good results as well. The difference between the uh, vaccines, Moderna is a modern vaccine, new way of delivery. We'll talk about that today. Um, both the other one, the Oxford and the Sinovac are more traditional vaccines. And that is the situation. Now we're going to go into the mechanics of 
the vaccines and we're going to try to understand what are the concerns there so ready it's all a con conspiracy so fen hitler says it's all a con conspiracy excellent all right hey guys how are you so let's start i'm going to share my screen so here this is a uh, moderna site and again this news that i'm going to show it to you it is in cnn but it is in fox as well so whichever brand you like to follow please follow that that i think it's a company released news so here what i would like to see here is this the early data from the phase 1 clinical trial which typically studies a small number of people and focuses on whether a vaccine is safe and can result over here look this is what is important and interesting all eight so moderna has vaccinated dozens of study participants and measured antibodies in eight of them all eight developed neutralizing antibodies to the virus so neutralizing antibodies to the virus is more important here at the levels and this is then the second thing at the levels reaching or exceeding the level seen in people who have naturally recovered so this is the uh, discussion moderna's own site here i what i really loved about their work was and I, i'm going to explain their work today and the concerns uh, for the work as well that where can things go wrong but what i loved this is that on january 13 they started work the uh, within 25 days they actually had the very first batch of ready 20 and then within 63 days of start they were in phase 1 studies so that is a rapid progress and then now at this time on april 27 they were allowed to go into phase 2 studies and moderna fin is finalizing protocol for phase 3 study of mrna because they have been approved to go to phase 3 studies and we have discussed this in the past at what are the differences between phase 0 1 2 3 and 4 So phase three is going to be thousands of people and um, larger doses. So we'll see. So that is in the summer of 2020. So that's also an interesting thing. Then this is another news about Moderna, where this is about the meet the company, and here the things that are here is what I'm going to explain. So let's look at it. Um, let me have my thing here. So let's see this. Moderna's vaccine. Moderna's vaccine is called mRNA 1273. That's the vaccine name. How did they make this vaccine? Is that they take the genetic information for the spike protein? So they took the genetic information for the spike protein. So see, they're not weakening the virus. They're not killing the virus. They're not taking a piece of the virus. Instead, they took the genetic material of the virus. Then, from that material, they are taking the spike protein gene. so the challenge was to find where the gene is for the spike protein and we have looked at the genetic material for the covid-19 many times now and we know where the gene is because china had uh, published the genome genomic structure very early on then they used this information to build messenger rna that is what is important and that is what we are going to see then what they do is they wrap so they build that new messenger rna which can which when goes into our body cells it allows our cells to make the spike protein they wrap that messenger rna in a lipid nanoparticle and that particle is injected into our body and that particle then goes into our immune cells and other cells and that is how the immune response starts and we're going to see that I just wanted to give us a summary of what is going on and this is what had happened within the 42 days they had gone from the genetic material to the vaccine itself and they have done the phase 1 trial here and that trial eight people have been tested and they all developed the neutralizing antibody so please remember neutralizing is more important than just the antibodies we can have so many com companies make Uh, vaccines that can generate antibodies but it may be that the antibodies of no use and i have discussed that in the past that for example let's say i am an antigen i am a pathogen and there is an antibody that holds my hands now that can cripple my work 
on the other hand there is another antibody that just goes and attaches to my head then what nothing nothing is going to happen my hands are still free to do my function that is the same thing with the bacteria and viruses we do not want the antibodies to just go and attach there where the virus and bacteria can still continue to function we want them to attach at a place where their function is disrupted and this is why we call it um the uh, neutralizing antibodies so yes siddhartha is asking a question carol thank you very much for the answer yes these messenger rnas are injected we'll talk about that in a second now one more thing three participants out of the phase 1 trial they did develop fever and flu like symptoms and the thing is is the dose was 250 mg remember the phase 1 and 2 trials are mostly the safety efficacy and the dosage so of course they tried 250 mg mg no not mg microgram but actually they anticipate moderna anticipates to give 25 to 100 microgram in actuality so this is again this is part of the trials that you give more drug and you try to see how much can be the upper level of a drug which is safe so uh, after this one more thing that is interesting is that moderna says so they're already in phase 2 now they're cleared for phase 2 they're going to start their phase 3 in june july time frame and then they feel that their availability after the phase 3 continues throughout the year then then from january to june of the next year they will have the the um the vaccine available they have already struck deals of course they got a lot of money so they have their own investors and then us government gave them 438 million dollars so they they are they have deep pockets at this time so they already have struck deals throughout the world to be able to produce 1 billion units per year so they they would have deep capacity to develop so with this let's start to understand how does their vaccine work and where, what are the concerns because the theory absolutely money is the thing <laughs> yes they got the money Akhtar Zada, good morning. You're welcome. All right. Let's look at it. So here is the virus. And here is the genetic material of the virus. Good. So this genetic material is the whole virus genome. What we do is we find the gene for the spike protein. So let's say here, this is the genome. And in that, this blue area is the gene for the spike protein. what they do is they take that uh material they they take those instructions out here they build them into an artificial rna which is called a messenger rna because it has a 5 prime end on this side and it has a 3 prime end on this side and this is the start side so that is called a messenger rna what is the benefit of doing that as soon as this rna is injected into our cells our cells machinery ribosomes can pick up this rna and directly start working with it and produce the proteins in this case they would produce spike proteins of the virus so let's say this is a spike protein so these protein proteins will be produced and then what is the benefit of producing these proteins of course once these proteins are produced these will be exhibited we have done this discussion many many times that these proteins will be exhibited exhibited on the cells so let's say this is a immune cell uh, macrophage remember we've talked about it that it will exhibit the antigen on its mhc2 i think we talk about it almost daily then some t cell will come in and connect with it so this is naive t cell and then there are co stimulations and finally the immune system would become activated correct we talked about it yesterday too so this is what will, would happen but the only thing is there is not a complete virus there is just the hand of the virus that is a spike protein and our body is reacting to that and learning to react to that and once the actual virus comes in we already know how to cut off its hand and bind it and so it cannot work with the as2 receptors to get into our body right so back here we took that gene then what they did was once they have the gene they modified the the nucleotides used the bases used remember we have uh, adenine guanine uracil and cytosine these are the chemical substances or nucleotides that are used in making the rna 
So they have, this company has these nucleotides that are modified. What is the benefit of modifying them? So this is the first concern with the vaccine and their answer, the company's answer to it. Look what happens is our body, our immune system can detect foreign messenger RNAs. This is how we detect bacteria and viruses. So imagine if we try to give an RNA in a vaccine, our body is going to detect that as well and then attack it. So they don't want the, the messenger RNA to be attacked because they want our immune cells to work with it to learn how to kill the virus. So the first thing that they do is that they have uridine, which is kind of analog uracil. So they have the uridine um, nucleotide at the base. It is modified. It is modified in a way that our immune cells cannot bind with it. So that is a first important thing to note, that our immune cells cannot attack the messenger RNA that the company is manufacturing to introduce into our body. So that means this messenger RNA would sit in there safely to help our body learn to work against the spike proteins. If our immune cells would pick up, <coughs> excuse me, if our immune cells would pick up the messenger RNA and eliminate it, then there will be no messenger RNA to make spike proteins and then there'll be no training for our immune system. So that is the first smart thing that they have done. Second thing is this. They have also other nucleotides or the bases that are also modified. And the benefit of those modifications is that the RNA that they have formed, it would be easier for our machinery, ribosomes, to unfold that RNA and to work with that RNA. So it would become effective and efficient to use that. So they have once again um, manufactured or modified those nucleotides to make the RNA. So that is another thing they have done. Third thing, or whatever is the next thing, they have then wrapped this RNA into a lipid nanoparticle. And why did they do that? Remember that... Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. So remember, this is our cell, and cell has a uh, lipid, phospholipid bilayer, uh, double layer, correct? And from this, any charged particle or water-soluble items cannot pass here. But lipid-soluble things can pass from this. This is why they are taking that RNA and wrapping it into a lipid particle so that the particle can be easily moved into the cells. May those be immune cells or may those be other. So once it is inside the cell, then the RNA would come out and that RNA will be then used by our, um, our ribosomes to make spike proteins, which would then be presented to the immune system and immune system would learn how to attack the spike proteins. So all good. But this is a difficult thing for to do. This part, it seems so simple, but it is really difficult. What are the difficulties? What are the concerns here? Um, first of all, making a lipid nanoparticle that can hold a complete big messenger RNA is a very difficult thing. Nanoparticles can be unstable and break down. So the company has to manufacture a nanoparticle that can hold a big messenger RNA in it and still be stable. So that's the first thing. So that is their first technology that they have. And they, this tells you the more technologies you're going to see here, this would also tell you that the vaccine is going to be expensive. Second problem is that the lipid nanoparticles are not easily degradable. So this is like water, you know, the plastic water bottles that we throw in the trash and they're going to live there for thousands of years. The lipid nanoparticles are like the water bottles. So they do have RNA in them, but and our immune systems are uh, cells are going to pick them up and break them up. So that is going to happen. But there is a concern that these lipid nanoparticles are going to accumulate in places like liver and they can be toxic. They, if Luckily, we're not going to give those every day. It's not a drug that is used by a patient on daily basis. It is a one-time injection, let's say maybe in two or three years. So because of that, it may be okay. But still, there is a concern that lipid uh, nanoparticles can be 
uh, accumulating in the uh, in the liver and be toxic so how are they helping that they're trying to figure out various kind of nanoparticles they're trying to make biodegradable nanoparticles they're trying to make instead of the na nanoparticles they are also i read that they are also trying to make not the particle but sheets which have then uh, messenger rna woven into them and then those sheets can be broken down so meaning this is their research this is what that company is this is their way of uh, helping but there is a concern that there can be toxicity so uh, there is a question here uh, arun says that can we break lipid by loser um i don't know by lipases sure so the question is that uh, so uh, look at the company's problem the the problem is that they need the nanoparticles to stay intact so that they can end up in the cells where they are needed to bring the rna in there so they are ferries right these are little boats we don't want them to be broken down before so lipases can attack them before and break them so they have to make sure that that doesn't happen and then secondly they also want them to go into the immune cells where they want them to break down so immune cells can take the rna out and that would happen thirdly their problem is that these things should not accumulate in areas where they have no function for example in the liver and now they're just sitting around there liver is not breaking them down it's not using them as well and they are just being toxic there so that is what is happening fascinating stuff right so this is a new technology and very interesting now what happens is so let's say that this is the lipid nanoparticle it has come and fused with our cell some cell let's say this is a macrophage so once it is fused the rna comes out of it here the rna comes out and remember this is a messenger rna so there is an artificial part in it and then there is the modified rna so that comes out unfolds gets stuck with a ribosome or many ribosomes ribosome and ribosome very happily doing us a favor starts making proteins that this messenger rna is encoding those proteins are the protein to make a spike protein correct so then the protein thread comes out then it is folded to make a correct spike protein and then as you know these spike proteins can then be presented on our immune system mhc2 or other cells would have it on mhc1 mhc2 or other cell non presenting cell will have it on mhc1 the 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 point is that these antigens these hands and feet of the virus are now shown outside and when they are shown outside we have done this discussion the t cell naive t cell will come in he is going to connect here then the co stimulation would occur the result of that is that naive t cell will become let's say t helper 2 that t helper 2 cell would then cause the b cells to become active today i am making the diagram the other way around so please forgive me i usually make it from left to right today i just started from right to left so the concept is still the same so then they make the antibodies these antibodies are the antibodies against the spike protein then in the future when actual virus comes in so let's say this virus comes in and it is all very angry is saying you know what i am really here i'm going to be doing some damage so the virus comes in he doesn't know or it doesn't know that we our immune system already knows about its hands and it needs those hands to connect with the ace2 correct so this is the ace2 and this is our cell so it needs these things to bind with the ace2 to get into our cells but guess what these antibodies are going to already get stuck to this this virus is hands so the the silly thing is now arrested it's tied down so imagine you have arrested someone um a criminal and that uh, things hands and feet are all tied so what can it do so then our body is going to come and break it up and destroy it so that is the basic idea this is what happens in the immune system and this is how this technology works now concerns 
I want to go over. So one concern is this is a this is a new technology. I believe there has not been a vaccine by Moderna before that is used. So how will the nanoparticles work? How will the messenger RNA work? Um, would it be safe? Will the nanoparticles get uh, stuck somewhere like liver? Um, that is not known, but the phase one is done and that has been successful. Phase two is underway and they are prepared. They have already been given approval by FDA for phase three. So of course there is safety in there. That is why this is happening. So this is the Moderna. I hope that now we have a deeper insight into how Moderna works. I would also like to, so there, I think it is called mRNA 1273. That's a vaccine name. I'm calling it Moderna. So it's 1273. I also wanted to go over the concerns for Sinovac. So of course, Oxford vaccine is not successful so far. So I can't really, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the mechanisms there. But I wanted to show you a couple of more things for Sinovac. One, before all of that, I want us to look at our heroes. So we should be grateful to them. These are the Reese's monkeys. And um, of course, the current uh, Sinovac. Uh, so somebody said that loss of connection. Are you able to uh, hear? And are you able to watch? I apologize if the connection is lost. <laughs> the ribosome is adorable. Yeah, so I uh, I had been trying to figure out how nice this ribosome can be. So he's the one. See, he even has this little hat. I gave him a hat because he's working very hard for us. So this is his higher hat. So anyways, all right. All right, so let's continue with our discussion. So I wanted to show us the... Windows is funny. So these are the Reese's monkeys. The Sinovac has tested their vaccine on rats, I believe, then bats, other animals, and Reese's monkeys. The, uh, I believe, Oxford vaccine was tested on Reese's monkeys, and then they were challenged by the virus, and the virus did not stop. So these monkeys are our heroes. They are some, some uh, they are creatures that we are using to figure out how well the viruses uh, vaccines work so we should be grateful for these um, animals okay back here so the this is the oxford doubts over oxford vaccine as it fails to stop coronavirus in animal trials i think this is telegraph.co.uk and here is what is going on oxford Uni university vaccine tripped a tipped as front runner in the race to develop a coronavirus jab does not stop the virus in monkeys and may only be partially effective, experts have warned. So there is, uh, I would put those links out, although there was a lot of uh, uh, hope that the vaccine would start and the UK people were saying that, hey, we would get the vaccine first and that all fair things. One good news in that is that the monkeys that were vaccinated when they were challenged by the virus, they did not develop pneumonia. That, so that means maybe the, the uh, vaccine cannot stop the virus, but it reduces the viral load enough that the virus does not cause severe damage. So on the upside, none of the vaccinated monkeys displayed pneumonia, which suggests that while not stopping the virus, it may be partially protective, which is a good news. Now I want to go to Sinovac for a second. So Sinovac had a bunch of uh, concerns to take care of, and all vaccines have that. For example, one of the uh, professors said that the number of animals used in the Sinovac trial, which is phase zero, were too small. So that is a fair criticism that the number of animals are small. So that means we cannot still, we may still need to approach that with a grain of salt. Another concern is that the monkeys do not develop the most severe symptoms that SARS-CoV-2 cases in humans. So we may not be able to say that, hey, if the monkey is okay, then the human will be okay with that vaccine as well, because human may have been developing, uh, humans are developing more severe cases compared to monkeys. So monkey may not be a good uh, case. 
then um, testing on animals is cruel and inhumane. Test is on the Chinese. So let's keep our discussion. I think that what uh, the approach taken by Moderna seems very interesting, where they directly went from genome to spike protein, and then they're injecting it to humans as test. So that um, let's see what happens there. Hopefully, in the future, our testing policies and procedures would, would change. Then there is another um, concern here. That was that antibody levels could lead to aberrant immune response, lower antibody levels. So what is the problem here? The problem is if for some reason our body does not respond with a full force when the vaccine comes in to train it, then the, the, the amount of antibodies produced may be small in number. And when the actual virus comes in, now we have a very weak response to it. And that is a concern that that weak response can actually now have our immune system not respond better at all. And that can cause a problem. So Sinovac has already looked into it and they have seen that the, the animals, so look here, but the Sinovac team did not find any, ev any evidence of lung damage in vaccinated animals who produce relatively low levels of antibodies. So that is another concern that they have taken care of. Then um, what they have done is they've taken the antibodies from, so what there was one more concern and that was the virus is mutating. So virus in rats may be different and then in uh, bats may be different and humans may be different and one human may be different and another human may be different. So because virus is changing, can the vaccine be successful? So what that Sinovac team did was they took the virus from monkeys, rats, mice, and other animals, and they gave them all the same vaccine. So of course, now the, the, the virus in the, these various animals is mutated or different, but still SARS-CoV-2, and still the spike protein is the same. So I've been saying that in the past, that spike protein mutation is not there, which is fortunate for us. So when they took the virus from all these different animals, that means different strains of the virus, and then uh, offered a challenge by the vaccine, they all got neutralized. So that is also a very, very important thing to, to see. So these are some of the concerns for the vaccines that were there and how companies are addressing those. And this kind of tells you that why it takes time in trials and we move from there. So that is the discussion for today. I did this on a Windows machine. I hope it was fine. Here is something that, that I wanna do from tomorrow and tell me if you like it. Uh, I have uh, been studying over this uh, weekend, I've been studying to see what other vitamins, what other minerals, what other um, possibilities are there to reduce the exposure to coronavirus and to protect us. So there are vitamin B complexes. There is vitamin K. There is a contraindication for vitamin E. Then there is vitamin A. And then there are some probiotics. There is copper as well. So from tomorrow, I'm going to do a small short course for the remaining four days of the week in which we're going to talk about other vitamins and other minerals that are protective against the SARS-CoV-2 or at least that the studies. So you know that I do not create rumors and I do not provide you propaganda discussions. We'll, we'll look at the studies for other vitamins as well to see how these can be helpful. That should allow us to create a cocktail of our own to say we need vitamin C and we need vitamin D and we need zinc and we need quercetin and we need A and K and B. And that is the cocktail for us to at least protect ourselves as much as we can. Maybe it is of no use. We don't know. We'll see. So far, the discussions that I've done, even today, I wanted to share with you this one as well. I forgot to mention it. In Bangladesh, they have done a study or they have observed. So there is a doctor in Bangladesh with his students. They have seen that ivermectin. I'm trying to find the link here. I had it somewhere. Um, ivermectin. Ivermectin, they have been, the one that is taken down by YouTube, my Ivermectin video is taken down by YouTube. Good results from that. Share that as well. I could not find it, but uh, let me, if you don't mind, I'm gonna do a quick lookup of that Bangla 
देश आइवर मैक्टिन आई थिंक दिस मे बी दन डॉक्सी साइक्लिन एंड आइवर मैक्टिन मेडिकल टीम इन बांग्लादेश सजेस्ट कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ आइवर मैक्टिन एंड डॉक्सी साइक्लिन फॉर कोविड नाइनटीन ट्रीटमेंट सो प्लीज रीड इट अप आई थॉट आई वुड डिस्कस दिस एज वेल बट देर इज वन मोर पॉसिबल कॉम्बिनेशन so what i wanted to do was i wanted to go over the discussions of other vitamins other possibilities and and have uh, we all kind of know those things is this good do you feel that that would be a decent uh, set of topics or should we talk about something else if that is the case please tell me if you have something um interesting to share as well please share that in the comments too and as always my request to you is please like subscribe and share that is how you can help me thank you very much and talk to you again